of San Domingo lived a gal named Obajingo. Hi guys, Cass from Reconstructing History here. I told you that I would come back and tell you what kind of accessories that you should wear with your 1920s dress. But first, I want to talk a little bit about body type. A lot of people have this idea that you have to be hipless and have a boy-like figure to look good in 1920s fashions. And that's just not true. There were as many different types of people, different shapes of people, in the 1920s as there are today. And we get this idea from some fashion pictures that are rather famous. Let me show you a few. You see, this is one of the classic ones where you see a woman in a rectangle, and she's a, kind of perfectly fits in the rectangle in a way that no human being really does. Or we see fashion illustrations like this, where the woman has a much bigger head than a human being should for her shoulder width or her hip width. You have to remember that these are drawings. They're almost cartoons. They're, they're meant to show off the clothing, not the shape of the person who wears it. I want to show you some pictures of real people wearing the clothing of the 1920s, and you tell me what you think. Ooh, a different book. A different book. A big book. Here's right. a bunch of different pictures. On this page here, you can see we have 16 different pictures of women in 20s style dresses. And as you can tell, not a single one of these women looks boy-like, and not a single one is a stick figure. Matter of fact, I've had people point out to me that they thought it was really nice that middle-aged women were being used in this photo shoot. These women are in their early 20s, if not their late teens. These are the models of Madeleine Viennet. So these aren't even just regular 20-something women. These are French model 20-something women. This is what people looked like. This is what the most fashionable perfect bodies looked like in the 1920s. And if you look at them, we think they're frumpy. I mean, we think they're kind of flabby. And that's what the fashionable style was. So if you think about it, it's not what we think. It's not skinny little preteens with no hips. The big deal about the 1920s wasn't that 20s clothing didn't conform to the, a woman's hips. It didn't conform to a woman's waist. If you think about the period before, the time period where women were wearing corsets to make their waists smaller, the 20s was a revolution against that idea because they simply didn't restrict their waists anymore. So in patterns that I have, original patterns from the 1920s, there, the standard size is 18. 18 means half of the bust measurement, so the bust measurement was 36. The average hip measurement for that bust measurement was 42 inches, which is not small. Today, it's 34 for 36 inch bust. So, you see, they weren't smaller than us, they were actually bigger, or they were at least the sizes were bigger than what our sizes are now, what we consider standard sizes now, which aren't, I mean, any, really mean nothing. But anyway, one of the important things, uh, let me show you some more pictures too, so you'd think it's not just models who looks like that. This is Madge Sanders. She was an English actress in the 1920s. You see, she's kind of very straight up and down, Legs might even be considered a little chubby. Here, she's almost got a paunch. This is a famous actress. And just for someone whose name you might recognize, that's Tallulah Bankhead. Tallulah Bankhead was probably the most famous actress of the early 20s. And in this picture, she was 23 years old. And she's got a gut. I want you to notice something else about this picture because it's very important with what I'm going to tell you to wear with your, your 20s dress. Look how low her bust line is. Now, you might think, oh, well, you know, she's an older woman. She's not an older woman. She's 23 years old. Um, her bust line is that low because bras in the 20s were very different from bras today. 
For us today, the ideal is to push your bust up, and not just to hold it up at a normal level, but to push it up beyond the normal level. In the 1920s, they just got away from corsets, and the ideal was to push the bust down. So the underwear from the 1920s, the brassieres and the corsets, both flattened the bust, and not flattened it like you were supposed to look like a boy, because it, regardless of what people say in costuming books, it wasn't a boyish figure that women were aiming for. It was a more natural figure. And a natural figure on a woman not wearing a corset has a lower bust, because your bust naturally drops with gravity. So she's probably not wearing a bra at all. She's probably just wearing a slip or a camisole. Um, if she is wearing a brassiere, it's pushing down on her bust, not pushing up on her bust. One of the biggest mistakes I see people making when they wear a 1920s dress, and it completely ruins the look of it, is they wear modern push-up bras. So their bust sticks out like this, way up here, instead of sitting down here where it belongs. Now, I know we're bustier than they were. I don't think we actually were are bustier than they were, but we think we're bustier than they were. So you want to wear a bra because you don't want to go braless with your 20s dress. It's fine. Wear a bra. Don't wear an underwire. Don't wear a push-up bra. If you could wear a sports bra that flattens you out a little bit, or I would even wear an ace bandage if I really needed the support because that will do the right thing. But if nothing else, just don't wear something that's going to lift your bust up so that it sticks out like, you know, the 1950s. Because that's the 1950s. The cones and stuff, the, the whole Gautier, everyone calls it the Madonna bra. It's not the Madonna bra because Gautier invented it. Um, that's 1950s, 1960s. That is not the 1920s. 1920s, very natural bust, way down here. Wonderful, wonderful um, movie that I can't remember the name of, which is embarrassing, but, um, and I can't remember if it was Myrna Loy, but one of the very, very famous actresses of the early 30s, and she is playing an actress, a famous actress, and she's on a train, and she's in this beautiful traveling suit, and she gets in her private compartment and all the press goes away and she's just there with her friends and uh, her, her male friends and she takes off her jacket and she's got on a sweater and she's clearly got on no bra and her boobs are down here by her waist and she was you know 28 years old and they're down here so believe me when I say to you it's you don't want to mm -mm, this this not this down here so that number one what you should be wearing under here is a slip and some kind of bra that if it doesn't flatten you out at least doesn't push you up. If you got some gush around the middle like I do the intent isn't to make your waist small but if you have a little spare tire and you want to put on a girdle or you know some kind of uh, restrictive undergarment just so you don't have a roll do it. They did it. We have plenty of examples of girls from the 1920s. Just because the 18-year-olds weren't wearing them anymore doesn't mean the 40-year-olds weren't wearing them. So, wear them. Um, stockings. Stockings tended to be either black or white. There were also colors, but we weren't, in the early 20s, and I'm shooting for 20. <laughs> Dignity, we have none. <laughs> That's just funny. Yeah, there's just no dignity no involved dignity. with her. She's enjoying herself. She really is, She's bless her heart. Herself. I've been watching her out of the corner of my eye, or the corner of the screen here, the whole time you've been talking, and it's really amusing. <laughs> the distraction from the important things I'm saying. I know. And now I've completely lost my train of thought. Stockings. Um, stockings, yes, stockings. Um, in the early 20s, and I'm my, my dress is from 22, 23, so that's what I'm focusing on. They weren't really wearing nude, you know, um, flesh-colored stockings yet, that, that hadn't yet become the, the norm. Um, they'd gotten away from wearing black stockings all the time, which had been the thing in the period before you always wore black stockings. Started wearing white stockings, opaque white stockings, and sometimes a little sheer, um, also pastel colors. Um, I'm going to be wearing white stockings because although they make my legs look enormous, um, it's summertime, and I'm wearing a white hat. I'm wearing, gonna wear this hat. So uh, that's what I'm going to wear. You don't have to wear a garter belt in this time period. Like I said, the dresses aren't so short. Um, and not that garters, garter belts weren't worn. They were worn in the early part of the, the very early part of the 20th century. 
um, and white part of the mountain center. But you can wear garters, actual, like, a piece of elastic that you roll the top of your stockings down over. It's much more popular in the 1920s than wearing a garter belt. So, you know, if you went to Catholic school, those things that we used to wear at the top of our socks to keep our socks up, you can wear those. I dug mine out. I didn't dig mine out. The elastic is dead in mine for 50 years. <laughs> I bought new elastic. Um, so those are stockings. Um, shoes, T-strap shoes, Mary Janes, those are all really appropriate for this time period. Um, nothing with a really spiky heel, because that just wasn't happening. Square heels. But um, the really big thing, I think, is hair and hats. Now, not everyone is a curly-coated retriever like yours truly. I can comb my hair into some finger waves and they'll stay that way all day. Um, if you want to do a vintage hairstyle, get the book Vintage Hairstyling. It's, uh, you can get it on Amazon. It's amazing. It's terrific. If you have pin straight hair, it'll show you how to set your hair so that you can do finger waves. And in a very 20s style. Um, it's awesome. It takes a lot of time though, so you know, if you don't have that kind of time. There are other things that you can do. Uh, one of the things, particularly if you have long hair, and this is a myth, uh, it's thought that you know everyone had a bob in the 1920s. Well of course everyone didn't have a bob in the 1920s. You know, not everybody cut their hair as soon as the decade changed. But it was very common for women to ah, I'm not gonna find it. Do it's almost a Princess Leia look, really. To make little chignons over your ears. There's also a picture I have from a little later, I think. You can never find it when you want to, can you? I know, it's bad preparation. Just bad, not bad, prepared. Bad. bad, bad, bad. Ooh, girls in lingerie. Um, Didn't let me zoom it. on that one, I know. You missed them. it. Hang on. Those are chaps. I know they're chaps. It goes men, women. There's a fencer. Oh, there's, there she is. Miss June Molyneux. You see how she has the Leia things kind of over her ears? It's the same basic shape as the finger-waved bob with the pin over the ear, but she's clearly got long hair. You can also do this with long hair if you take your long hair and you kind of curl it up and stick it up under the nape of your neck, like hide it under your hair with bobbing pins. Um, I've done this, and I have ridiculously heavy hair. When I had longer hair, I would just stuff it up until it looked like a bob, and it works because the bobbing pins hold onto the hair, and it, you know, works all day. Um, so you can do that, and you can do a lot of things. But if you don't have hair that lends itself to that easily, or you just plain don't want to do that much with your hair, hats are a wonderful thing. Like I just put this on, and it does everything for me. Um, you know, my hair is a mess, that's why I put a hat on so I can film this video and look like a schmuck. Um, hats, if you look at the hats of the time period, now, you know, if you want a real cloche, go to Hats in the Belfry, hatsinthebelfry.com, or your local Hats in the Belfry store, and buy yourself a cloche, because they're great. Is and that where that one came from? This came from Hats in the Belfry. And Hats in the Belfry, the Belfry bland, Brent, the Belfry brands that they sell are all made in the USA and you should support American hat makers because they're having a really hard time of it. They make major, majorly, majorly wonderful hats so you should buy them. But they also have cheaper closures too so it's fine. Um, if you don't have a Hats in the Belfry and you just want to go to your local hat store, you can get closures. You can also get what they call bucket hats, which are hats that look like an upturned bucket. It's basically a squarer version of this. They were also worn in the 1920s. Or you could wear um, big floppy hats actually work as well. If you look at some I have here, they're just, you know, your basic big sun hats, big floppy velvet hats that 
the important thing in the 1920s for the proper look is that it be the hat come down way, way close to your eyes. So you want almost not to be able to see the eyes. So you're kind of peering out like a little raccoon under a hedge or something. It's, you, you don't want the hat to be way back here. You don't want to see your forehead at all. You want it to be very low. So any hat, really, any hat that you can get that will come down this far on your eyes, no matter what the shape of the hat, it kind of works because it's, it's that look that you're going for. So, and, and from what I can tell of my explorations of 1920s hats, they wore a great variety of styles, and the only unifying thing is that they, you know, you couldn't even see their eyebrows, they came down so low. So, um, a couple of other things. Don't do the things where you have the cheap pearls that come down to your knees and you tie them in a big knot. I don't think I've ever seen that in a picture of a person actually from the 1920s. This is a costume thing, it's goofy. It, it looks cheap. It, the fronts of 1920s dresses, when they're not embroidered or beaded, are kind of plain. So it's perfectly all right to wear something, something very elaborate and dangly as a necklace, to kind of take up that space. But the, everybody, at anything you go to that's 1920s, everybody else is going to have a big string of fake pearls tied in a knot. So don't do it, because then you'll be different. <laughs> <laughs> it will be wonderful. Um, another thing to avoid because it looks cheap, uh, the sequined elastic bands. You just put sequined elastic band and stick it down over your modern hairstyle and suddenly you think you look like you're from the 20s and you don't. Um, much, much better to go and get a hat that will do this kind of effect than wear that. So that's all I have for you today and I will show you my dress on Saturday when I put it on and get ready to go to Jazz Age on the Delaware. Till then, bye.